This video is made possible by Corvette Mike Midwest. Corvette Mike Midwest is your one-stop shop for amazing, timeless classic vehicles. If you are looking to buy a classic or sell your classic vehicle, please contact Corvette Mike Midwest with the information up on the screen or linked in the description below. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1930 Cadillac Series 353 limousine. Up front is a 5.7 liter V8. Down below is an automatic transmission, but it's a more modern one. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. I am super excited to be driving this because this is now the oldest vehicle I have ever driven here on the channel. The previous title for that was my own personal 1931 Ford Model A, but this is 1930. So let's get back to that V8 under the hood. Now that is not the original V8 that you're seeing on camera now. It is, of course, since been swapped out. However, this car did originally come with a 353 cubic inch V8. Cadillac changed it up in 1929, so it had a whopping 95 horsepower from the factory. That's right, a 353 cubic inch V8 made 95 horsepower back in the day. That was peak performance, but that was not the biggest engine that was offered. This chassis also got the V16, which was developed in 1929 for 1930 and offered a whopping 160 horsepower and could get this thing up to 100 miles an hour back in 1930, which is tremendously scary. <laughs> and I give serious props to whoever actually found that out. But the V16 was a very short-lived engine for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was very expensive. And in 1929, America experienced the stock market crash, the Great Depression. So selling a V16 during the Great Depression is like trying to sell a Hummer during a large recession which GM also did 100 years later. The other reason is the fact that World War II was about to start. So in the mid 30s, that V16 was actually the last engine from an American company to be produced before the war effort started. It was the last new engine to come from a manufacturer before we started, of course, manufacturing products for the war effort. So like I said, this is not the V16 version. However, I still can't believe that Cadillac even did it. And really the only reason they did do it was because Packard, their rival, had a V12. So GM just added four more cylinders, I guess. That was the competition back in the 30s. It was a 7.4 liter V16. In terms of actual driving feel, this thing is so ridiculously large. Of course it's a limousine, but the wheels are large, the headlights are large, everything is just supersized. The steering wheel is also very large because it does not have power steering, but once you get going, you don't notice it too much, but it's still not super comfortable to turn. It's almost like driving a modern pickup truck, like a GMC 2500, but you don't have any power steering and it's wiggling a lot more than you'd like it to. This wasn't really a performance car, but then again, this car is 91 years old. Oh, thumbs up, hey! <laughs> That's the thing I love about driving these old cars is that everyone gives you a thumbs up. It doesn't matter if they like American cars, foreign, whatever it is, everyone loves seeing cars from the 30s. Like I said, paired to it is a more modern automatic transmission. This car has been swapped out for more modern parts to keep it on the road by a previous owner. It's a three-speed GM automatic transmission and it shifts fine. It, it drives like a normal modern car. However, I do want to take a second to talk about the original transmission, which was a three-speed synchro mesh transmission from Cadillac. Now in 1929, this was the first ever synchronized transmission to be put in a car for public sale. And what that means is that today when we drive manual transmissions, they have synchros in them. You just put the clutch in and move it from second to third gear, third to fourth, fifth to sixth, whatever it may be. Back in the day, that wasn't really a thing. Our Model A is a three-speed unsynchronized manual transmission. So when you go from first to second gear, you have to wait and you have to match the speed of the engine to the speed of the wheels when shifting gears. You have to do that on your own. Well, Cadillac in 1929 offered the synchro mesh transmission 
which had the first ever synchros in it. So this car actually got the first ever synchronized manual transmission in a vehicle, which is absolutely cool and such a unique part of history. Last but not least, of course, the Cadillac limousine is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We have a couple interesting parts to talk about back here, mainly the back seat, but we'll get there in due time. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges across the dash. Now, a lot of these have been swapped out again for more modern gauges to keep a proper eye on what's going on. However, in the center, I do have the original speedometer, odometer, and trip odometer, which is fantastic. I think it's hilarious that not only the odometer is only five digits, but the trip odometer is only really two digits with the red being the point whatever, because people didn't really go on long journeys. A 30 mile journey back in 1930 was a lot. So you didn't really need much. Now the steering wheel, like I said, while driving is absolutely huge. No power steering and that's why it is large. To the left of me, I also have a headlight switch. This is the modern headlight switch. And I do have retrofitted turn signals, again, added after the fact. On the door, I just have my handle and my crank. Down on the center console, I just have the modern shifter. However, I don't get any cup holders, so of course, by default, the Cadillac limousine from 1930 fails the big friggin' bottle test. Before we get on with the rest of the review, I wanna give a huge thank you to Fixed. Fixed is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor for your car. You could plug it into any OBD2 vehicle, which is a vehicle manufactured after 1996, and you could take a look at your gauges, you can keep an eye on your temperature, you could see your speed, you could time your zero to 60. There's tons of really cool features that will pair directly to your smartphone, and it gives you great insight on your vehicles. Fixed is giving my viewers a hefty discount, so click the link in the description below, get your own fixed OBD2 Bluetooth sensor, and start learning more about your car. And that's really it. The seats are really comfortable up here. They're very plush, they're leather, they're bouncy, and this is a lot easier to fit in than my Model A. My Model A, you kind of have to squeeze up front, but this is a lot more manageable. However, speaking of the differences between the front and the back, this is a limousine. So let's go take a look at the back. All right, so now we're in the back of the 1930 Cadillac limousine and wow, the space back here is unparalleled by any vehicle I've ever been in ever, period. I can stretch my leg fully out and I'm not touching the front seats, let alone anything. I can literally kick my leg all the way up and I will not touch anything. I do have a light switch, which the light still turns on, which is fantastic. I have ashtrays here that are absolutely beautiful. I have these little side windows, which are great, and I can roll up and down as well. But I mean, the size and the, the, the room back here is unparalleled. It is absolutely insane. Now, one interesting thing is the fact that these seats are cloth. The front seats are leather. The back seats are cloth. This actually was sort of a fad or a way of doing things in the fact that the nice plush cloth seats were actually reserved for the more luxury portion of the vehicle. Up front, you know, in, in this car, I would have a driver. I would not be driving this. Pfft, come on. I would pay someone to drive it. They get harsh leather. It's a harder material. But this back here, I get this nice, nice soft material back here for the comfort. So I think it's really funny that nowadays, nice luxury cars have leather. I always talk about it, they got taut leather. But back in the day, real luxury cars had cloth. So one last thing, that's all my camera equipment and stuff. But I mean, look at this. I mean, I do have a partition. Oh yeah, I wanted to mention that. I have a slide open partition, which is fantastic. But guys, look at this. I am fully spread out. I can't even, I can't, I'm tr literally trying to kick the front wall and I can't. That's how awesome this back seat is. I can't get over it. This is fantastic. Now, not all 353s were like this, however. There was over 50 different trim levels you could get for the Cadillac at this time. Over 50! So the limousine was just one of them. Just one of 50 trim levels. Now, one thing before we hop back up front I wanted to mention is the fact that this is the trunk. This is actually a leather-bound trunk where you could put items in the vehicle. This is where we get the name trunk from because this is literally a trunk, like a, like a small briefcase, like a cabinet. Like that's, that's what a trunk is and this is literally a trunk. That's why in modern cars, we call the rear storage compartment a trunk because they literally used to be trunks. I just thought that that's really cool. Now we gotta talk about the looks. I love the burgundy color. I love the white wall wheels. I just love the overall look 
of this here Cadillac. It's huge, it's massive, and that's what I love about vehicles of this era. It's so iconic and so unique. And that's really my final thoughts here on the 1930 Cadillac 353 limousine. The fact that this is such an important car that I feel like people don't know about. And the reason I feel like that is because I didn't know about it. You could get one of these with a V16 engine. A V16, which was essentially two flathead V8s. This was the first vehicle to have a synchronized manual transmission. And I mean, just look at it. So rich in American history. It's beautiful. It, it, it's just so iconic. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Corvette Mike Midwest for letting me take out their 1930 Cadillac. This is one of their vehicles in their inventory. If you are looking to buy or sell your classic vehicle, please contact Corvette Mike Midwest. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. They're absolutely fantastic. I mean, they have some of the coolest cars you will find in the Midwest for sure. So please go check them out. It helps out the channel and I would seriously appreciate it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys.